My brief topic for you is really about thyroid nodules and what is a nodule um, of the thyroid. Again, it's a bump inside the thyroid, a discrete area that we can see or feel. Um, and it has to be what we call sonographically discrete. What that means is if we use an ultrasound, which is a form of imaging that uses sonar images, that we can really see an area that's different from the surrounding thyroid. Generally, um, if we walked out on the street and we just took people off the street and said, hey, um, come take a thyroid ultrasound, 50 to 75% of people would have at least one nodule. And so they're very, very common. And in general, we're really trying to leave them alone because if they're not bothering you, we don't want to bother them. And so again, that uh, do as little harm as possible principle stays with us. Um, again, uh, if you actually went and felt your neck, um, anywhere from 3 to 7% of people might feel a bump in their thyroid. And again, as we age, those bumps become more common. Only about 5% of these nodules are cancerous. So again, what we really try to do is target the ones that we think are concerning or suspicious and leave the rest alone. The really interesting thing, and this goes to Dr. Zemmel's talk about our environment uh, and endocrine disrupting chemicals and a lot of other things that are coming to light, which is that the rate of thyroid cancer is, is rapidly increasing. Some of that is that we're finding more of them because we have such fabulous medical imaging, but there are also other environmental factors that are playing roles that it's becoming more common. And we do think that um, in the next 10 years, years or so, thyroid cancer will be the number two cancer in women. Um, the good news is that the thyroid cancer is very treatable and it's rare that anybody dies of thyroid cancer. Um, but again, how do we even find bumps to worry about? Well, most of them we find um, either because somebody feels a lump on their routine exam or they get a medical imaging study and we accidentally come across a lump. Um, we use ultrasound as our um, imaging of choice for the thyroid. Uh, and again, we have all kinds of additional diagnostic tools that we can use before we talk to people about surgery and other things that are more dramatic. What myths do we need to think about with nodules? Um, we used to have a myth that if we took iodine that the nodules will go away. That is not true. Um, and again, we've talked a lot about iodine and I'll skip forward on this, but iodine does not make nodules away. It doesn't cause or heal them. The other myth that we have is, well, what about taking thyroid hormone? And there's a lot of doctors that are still prescribing thyroid hormone because there was a myth many years ago that if we took thyroid hormone and then the pituitary gland relaxed, stopped making as much TSH, that maybe those nodules wouldn't grow so much. We have not found evidence that that is true. And so taking the thyroid hormone to shrink nodules doesn't work. So again, may be harmful. Do all nodules need a biopsy? No, actually most of them don't. And so again, we can target which ones need a biopsy by their appearance on ultrasound and a bunch of other features. And we've developed a really fancy grading system for how we determine that. And so your doctor can let you know because this is obviously quite complicated, but it's becoming pretty reproducible in which ones are suspicious and which ones are not. And again, I put this up for the complexity of, of events, but nodules do need to be evaluated by somebody that knows what they're looking at so we can decide, is this one that really we can just watch or is this one that does need a biopsy? What about the, the conception that thyroid surgery is risky or dangerous? In this day and age, most thyroid surgery is very, very low risk. Most thyroid surgery is done as outpatient procedures in hospitals or surgery centers through very small scars that about the two widths of my thumb is a typical thyroid surgery scar. Uh, and we find that we don't have to restrict people's diets, we don't have to restrict people's activity, and most people do not take narcotic pain medications after surgery and actually feel well. We let people start driving when they feel like driving and exercising as quickly as possible. So in summary, what can you do to keep your thyroid health healthy? We do want everybody getting their thyroid checked, both a manual exam by your doctor, as well as one that we can teach you to do at home, as well as the functional test. So again, we have to look at form and function to make sure we keep your thyroid healthy. 
very important, take your prescription medicines as indicated. Don't try and stop or adjust them on your own. And again, if you're taking supplements, you have to let your doctors know what you're on as it can affect both the absorption of those medications and again, your intestinal health. Um, wear a thyroid shield when you can, when it's not gonna interfere with the exam and just feel safe that medical imaging in the current era is safe and that we do take radiation into consideration and eat healthy and, and exercise. But don't, don't again, try and adjust your hormones on your own. Don't ignore lumps in your neck. And again, please don't try and blame your thyroid for all your symptoms because most of the symptoms we have are very vague and the thyroid is one of the easier things for us to fix because with hormone testing, we can work with you um, to get your thyroid to the best possible place, but you have to be a little bit patient those thyroid hormones and things take time.